Welcome to Real Physics. Today I want to talk about something totally speculative. And if you don't like speculation, so don't just turn it off. It's, it's really a little bit exotic. So to begin with, uh, if you have heard of variable speed of light, variable speed of light is very interesting and you can explain a lot of things and uh, explaining the gravitational constant and inertia and Dirac's large number and so on and so forth. Um, I have made a playlist on that. So if you have never heard about variable speed of light, maybe you go there first if you're interested in that topic. But the basis of all this variable speed of light theories with gravity is that nearby masses cause the speed of light to decrease. Okay? You have just a nice formula, be it a proposal by Dicke or be it a proposal by Sharma or others. It works. But the question behind all this remains what makes the speed of light to decrease? Actually, there isn't a mechanism. And uh, if you just do gravitational physics, uh, maybe you don't want to wonder about, but if you think about the entire physics, you know, I mean, particles, what is a mass? Particles have to be masses. We know this from de Broglie's wave mechanics, uh, got the Nobel Prize in 1929, and the, the famous Davison gamma experiment proved that there is a wave nature of particles. So particles must somehow be waves. How could a particle being mass represented by a wave somehow decrease the speed of light? Now the totally exotic idea here is that you imagine a wave, I'm talking about one particle, but it's a wave pervading the entire universe and it's everywhere in the same phase. It goes like this, everywhere is the same phase. It has to have a spatial dependency, of course, maybe a one over R decrease, or you, you smooth out the singularity with a, with some kind of uh, hyperbolic function or whatever. Anyway, the spatial dependency is not important. It is important, but you can solve that. But the, the idea is that to have this wave, which is which has everywhere the same Phase. Now, if you think about more particles and the variety of particles in the universe, all these waves are, of course, random. They would combine in a random manner, and you have to calculate, due to the superposition, of course, that there is a wave everywhere resulting from all these contributions of all these particles. And this is, of course, yeah, you can do that only in, st in a statistical way, maybe with some random work or something. And uh, the idea then is, does this arbitrary random motion, which is created by all the waves all the, of all the particles in the universe, does that random motion itself decrease the speed of light? So that would be an explanation, a mechanism. But until now, it's just an idea, a half-baked thought. So I did some calculations but uh, without success so far. If you feel inspired, go ahead and develop it. And of course, all this is related, as I said, to variable speed of light, which is interesting in any case. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it. And if you're interested in fundamental physics, subscribe to this channel.